I would like to thank everyone for coming this evening. This is a very special event for me, not only because of the support demonstrated by all of you, but also because of the support demonstrated by our special guest, President Reagan. I am honored that a man I admire so much would take time from his demanding schedule to help me in my campaign. There's a story about our president that shortly after his election and before assuming office, he was briefed by his advisors on the many problems facing America. After listening quietly for more than an hour, he simply smiled and said, I think I'll demand a recount. Not long afterwards, a visiting friend from California was ready to return home. And our president, slightly homesick and cold, after all, it was mid-February, said, John, wait until I get my hat. I'll go with you. Well, tonight as we celebrate the 88th election season, some 91 months later, we can only say, Mr. President, Thank God you stayed. Because, because of your vision and leadership, tonight America celebrates with us. Tonight, America celebrates in a land of prosperity, a land of peace, a land dramatically changed from the bygone Carter years of double-digit inflation, soaring interest rates, disheartening unemployment, years when our country was held hostage in Iran and to Soviet expansionism around the world. Tonight, Mr. President, we say thank you. And while we're confident that Vice President Bush will carry on brilliantly, we can't help but wish that we could repeal the 22nd Amendment for four more years of the Reagan Revolution. I'm proud. I'm proud of the role I played in the revolution. I'm proud of the Roth Kemp tax cuts, which became the blueprint for Reaganomics. I'm proud of the role I played to ensure that our military is strong and viable that our alliances remain resolute, and that our role in global leadership be returned. President Reagan, you've been instrumental in the success of our policies. Your leadership provided us with the vision and the motivation to turn our policies into bright, successful realities. Now, as you prepare to return to California, something you wanted to do eight years ago, you do so with our gratitude and our commitment, our commitment that in the revolution you begin, we will continue the good fight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm indeed honored to present the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Bill, for that most generous and kind introduction. That's the fine thing about this job. People start talking that way about you, and all you can do is sit there and modestly take it. <laughs> But thank you all, and let me say a special thank you to Delaware's National Committee woman, Priscilla Rakestraw, and the finance chairman for Bill's campaign, Dick Collins. We're here tonight not just to hear about a friend of his state and of his nation, but to help make sure that one of the most visionary and effective men to serve in this century 
is returned to the United States Senate in November. And I'll bet you know I'm talking about Bill Roth. <laughs> you know, when I think of what having Bill Roth in the Senate has meant to the country, when I think of the landmark legislation he sponsored, and the way that that legislation has changed not only our nation but the entire world, it reminds me of something a great Hollywood producer, Sam Goldwyn, one of the founders of MGM, once said when he got worked up about a script. Sam Goldwyn had a way with words. He said, that story is wonderful. It's magnificent. It's prolific. <laughs> well, yes, wonderful, magnificent, prolific. Describe the career and contributions to America of Bill Roth. For 22 years, he has served in Congress, 18 of those years in the Senate. How has he changed America? Well, let me count the ways. Bill has been a leader in uncovering government waste. He was a strong supporter of the Grace Commission and has pushed for implementation of the Commission's recommendations, recommendations that went department by department throughout the entire government. And out of 2,160 recommendations, we have to date implemented 1,426 or 66 percent of them. And we estimate that this year alone, we have saved about $41 billion. Bill Roth deserves a lot of credit for these achievements. In another area, the environment. Last week, the news magazines finally caught up with Bill. Both Time and Newsweek ran stories on ocean dumping. Well, for years, Bill has been working to stop ocean dumping and the burning of toxic waste off the Delaware coast. Some candidates talk about family and traditional values. Bill works to foster and protect them. He led the fight to save IRAs and to encourage their use for college education. He's among the Senate's leaders in the fight against child pornography, and he helped persuade the Motion Picture Association to tighten the rating guidelines for movies that portray drug use. Finally, of course, without Bill Roth's help, would there or could there have been the Roth-Kemp tax cut? That tax cut ushered in the longest peacetime economic expansion on record. Since our expansion began, America has created more than 17 million new jobs, and the real income of the typical American family has grown by more than 10 percent, compared to a 3 percent drop during the previous administration. Some predicted that Roth Kemp would launch a new round of inflation. Instead, inflation today is a third of what it was the day we took office. Others said it would take from the poor and give to the rich. Yet today, Americans with the most income pay more of our total income taxes than before Roth Kemp and our subsequent tax reform bill, while millions of the poorest now pay no federal income tax at all. Let me give you an idea of what rising incomes and lower inflation, together with the lower interest rates that have come with low inflation, have meant to American families. According to the National Association of Realtors, in the year we took office, the average American family made only 74 percent of the income it needed to buy a home. For many families, particularly new families, affordable housing was quickly becoming a memory of the past. Today, the average family makes 114 percent of what it needs to buy a home. The American dream of owning a home is in reach of American families once again. Yes, America is in a new era of opportunity. Some have called it the Reagan era, but I could as easily call it the Roth era because Bill Roth is one of those we can thank for more people being at work this year than at any time in the history of the United States of America. I have to add something here. I was surprised myself. I didn't know too much about the statisticians as to what they considered 
the potential employment pool in America. It is everybody, male and female, from the age of 16 and up, all the way up. Today, the greatest percentage of that pool is employed, 62.6% than ever in the history of our country before. A certain candidate recently said that if he has his way, next January, the Reagan era will be over. Does he want to end the era of lower tax rates and higher real income for families, record numbers of jobs, low inflation and interest rates, steady growth and respect, not just lip service for families? The American people may have a thing or two to say about that. That same candidate claims that he has balanced 10 budgets in a row. But as one newspaper wrote recently, his budget is, quote, not balanced in any recognizable sense of the word. His budget includes almost a half a billion dollars of new borrowing, drawing reserves and tapping pension funds, and the kind of creative accounting that nearly sent New York City to the poorhouse just a few years ago. No wonder his lieutenant governor slipped out of Atlanta before the acceptance speech, telling reporters, I need to get back into the state, Massachusetts, and start picking up the pieces. America this year has come to a divide in the road. Take one fork, and we continue in the direction that Bill Roth has helped chart. Take the other, and in four years, all of us may be picking up the pieces. Today, America has peace and prosperity, growth and opportunity. We can re-elect them or turn to the liberal alternative. It's no secret which way I want to go. Come January, I want Bill Roth in the Senate and George Bush in the White House. And this brings me to a pivotal point. Electing a new president is only half of deciding which way America will go. The other half is electing a new Congress. None of what, what Bill and I have accomplished the last eight years could have been achieved had we not had a Republican Senate for six of those years. So I hope you will not only help Bill return to the Senate, but help him get a little more company there as well. Think of it as an Inauguration Day present for President Bush. Each of us can contribute to Bill's campaign in his or her way. The foundation of a successful campaign is hard work and the dedication of loyal supporters like Priscilla and Dick and every one of you here. Yes, if anyone in America has loyal supporters, it's Bill Roth, and he deserves your support. For all you're doing for him and for our beloved nation, thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, before you go, we have a simple but meaningful gift for you. As you know, behind every great man is a faithful companion. Or as Harry Truman once said, if, if a man's looking for a friend in Washington, let him buy a dog. <laughs> and, uh, and frankly, most uh, great statesmen have. Churchill had Rufus. Lyndon Johnson had Edgar, named after his FBI director. <laughs> JFK had Clipper, who Jackie once, when asked what the great German shepherd ate, replied, reporters. <laughs> and of course, Kennedy also had Pashinko, a dog given to him by Khrushchev, but he had to give him back when it was discovered the dog was bugged. <laughs> FDR had fellow, and of course, Mr. President, we all know about your sidekicks, Lucky and Rex, 
Well, in Delaware, I've raised four generations of St. Bernards. Some might say I'm trying to breed my own fan club. <laughs> but every campaign season, they hit the trail with me as my good luck charms and constant companion. This year, Hagar the Horrible will be at my side. <laughs> and as a token of my appreciation, a symbol of my campaign, I'd like to present you, Mr. President, with Hagar Jr. <laughs> and he's got a message. <laughs> Vote for Bill Roth. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> well, I was looking forward to meeting the real Hagar. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you very much. Oh, wait till I get you home. <laughs> Rex will go wild. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you something about Rex. You know, he's a tiny little dog. He never will be any bigger. But on television, if we're watching a Western and the horses come on, he's right down there almost biting the TV screen and barking at them. I can't wait to get him to the ranch and let him find out how big a real horse is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all.